Hello and welcome. Today we are going to cover the basics of running Gauss code that was written by someone else. I think this is a great topic which will help quite a lot of you because it's really common for people to find some exciting and possibly very complicated Gauss code on the internet and try to run it right away without learning even the basics of Gauss. And I understand, people are busy and need to get things done quickly. And if that's you, you're in the right place. In this series, we will show the steps you need to get your Gauss project up and running, as well as how to resolve the errors you are most likely to run into. In this first video, we will start with a simple project consisting of one code file and one data file located in our downloads directory. We will go through the process of creating a folder for our project, opening the folder in the project folders window, and running the program. From there, we will work through two errors library not found, and file not found. And along the way, we will introduce the applications installer and show you how to set your working directory. Our first step will be to create a folder to hold the code and data from this project. It is important to keep your folders and projects organized. What that means will depend on the complexity of the project. For this case, we will just make a single folder to hold both files. But if you have a larger number of files, it often makes sense to create separate subfolders for the data, code, and output. Now we will copy our code and data to the folder we just created. We can hold down Shift and then click and drag our mouse across the files to select them. After navigating back to our Acme Sales folder, we right click and paste the files. To start working with our code, we'll open the folder we just created in the Gauss Project Folders window. Notice that we are on the Gauss Edit page. We can do this by either selecting File, Open Project Folder, or right-clicking in the Project Folders window and selecting Add Folder. Next, we will browse and select the folder we just created. It is important to remember to select the folder, not the individual file. Now, after expanding the node, we can open our main code file by double-clicking it in the Project Folders window. It's now time to run the code. Click the downward pointing triangle just to the right of the Run button and select Current File. The error output window is displaying two different errors. We will resolve them one at a time and I recommend that you do that as well until you are more familiar with Gauss. Each of the errors tells us the main error number and message, in this case error G0290, library not found, followed by the particular file it was looking for, surrounded by single ticks. Gauss looks through a list of paths to find libraries, and the one listed here is just the final place that it looked. So the path is not as important to us. The information we really need is the file name. Here we see it as optmt.lcg. The file name will always be the same as the name used in the library statement plus the .lcg file extension. Next, inside of square brackets, we see the name of the file and the line number where the error occurred. The line number is a link which will take us to the location of the error. The library not found error always means that there is an application module which we need to install. It could be an official package provided by AppTech, or it could be a user-created package. OptMT is an official Gauss package for unconstrained optimization. We can install it using the Applications Installer by selecting Tools, Install Application from the main menu. Follow the instructions of the wizard and select the package zip file. Some browsers, such as Safari, will automatically unzip your downloads. However, the Applications Installer needs the original zip file, so make sure you have that. Now that our package has been successfully installed, we will rerun the code. We have resolved our first error. Our one remaining error is telling us that our data file could not be found. We can see that the error is coming from the line with the load command. The two main reasons that the load command will not be able to find the file are that we misspelled the file name, which we did not do in this case, 
or that the file does not exist in the folder that the load command is looking. By default, the load command will look in your current working directory. As we can see on the Gauss toolbar, our current working directory is users, research, Gauss 19. If we hover our cursor over our project folder, we can see that our project folder does not match our current working directory. Fortunately, we can easily set a working directory by right-clicking on the project folder and selecting Set to Working Directory. Now our working directory is correct and we can rerun the file. This time all of our errors have been resolved. But I know some of you are wondering, did anything happen? Where are my results? The output from a Gauss program is usually a table printed to the program input output window, an output file, or both. In this case, neither occurred. However, we can click to the data mode and see the data which was added to our Gauss workspace. The symbols window shows us the data in our Gauss workspace. We can double click to view the contents of any of these matrices. To view more than one symbol at a time, we can right click on an open tab and split our stack of tabs. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you feel more comfortable with Gauss. Post your comments and questions down below and look out for the next videos in this series where we look at some more complicated projects and errors.